Pullman is a really special place. It is built the way theaters should be built, which, by the way, is the largest, grandest theater in America in a town this small. George Coleman loved theater and the movies. It was a hobby of his, especially after he became so wealthy. Uh, he married a woman 30 years his junior, and they loved to travel the world. He had a home in California, one in Florida. Uh, his home in California was near that of a, a very familiar name, Mr. Bing Crosby. And Bing Crosby was in the Orpheum vaudeville circuit. And, and uh, reportedly in a conversation, George Coleman said, I want but the workers who've made me so wealthy to see the great acts that I get to see around the world as I travel. And they're my workers, and I wouldn't be here without them. And at the suggestion of being Crosby, we've heard, uh, he, he decided to sign on with the vaudeville circuit. And he owned a theater down the street called the Glory B. It was quite small, but lovely. And as he thought they would be coming there. And they said, oh, your theater isn't big enough. And George said, oh, I'll just build one. And they said, we're coming in a year. And so in 330 days, he built a magnificent theater palace. It opened on April 18th, 1929, just 330 days after he signed that contract, to everyone's amazement. The ones that we do know about from newspapers and some playbills we found are, of course, Will Rogers performed here twice. Sally Rand, the exotic dancer, did her fan dance here a couple of times. Tom Mix, uh, the famous silent movie star, uh, performed here, and his Wonder Horse Tony went right across that stage. We know that Cary Grant came promoting a movie, didn't have Jay Leno and David Letterman to promote movies, so the actors actually came through. Howard Keel came through. Uh, Harry Blackstone performed here. Uh, just about everybody who was anybody uh, appeared on this stage during that period of time. The kids come in for the first time from kindergarten and they'll turn to their teacher and they'll say, oh, teacher, it's a castle. And it truly is, it's our castle and it's a, it's a jewel right here in the middle of Route 66. It draws visitors from all over the world and it's, I think it's our economic engine for our community. It's what makes us completely unique and it brings people from everywhere. And now we're back to doing live shows the Glenn Miller Orchestra, Bob Wills Texas Playboys, and light opera and ballet and silent movies with our mighty world of organ. This theater has been named the premier theater of the state of Oklahoma by the Oklahoma legislature, signed by the governor, because all the other great theaters like this in Tulsa, Oklahoma City, have been torn down. This is the last remaining one in the area, and it's one of the most beautiful in the country. We have groups of people coming in, having lunch on our historic stage, and having a tour. And we do tours every day, Tuesday through Friday, actually Tuesday through Saturday, and just for donations, because we want to share our story. George Coleman was 70 years old when this theater opened, and he died in 1945. Uh, his wife was not interested in keeping it open herself and turned it over to a movie company. They brought down the screen, and for generations, people thought that it was just a movie house. They didn't know there were dressing rooms and a big stage. And, and for the most part, um, vaudeville was dead. It has never been closed, although it probably should have been. In the late 80s, it had deteriorated so much that they painted over the gold leaf. The 2,000-pound chandelier was gone. The mighty Wurlitzer organ had been sold. The seats had been modernized, and they had springs sticking up, and everything was moldy. Water was literally running down the walls. There were holes in the ceiling. It was musty, moldy, but it was still open. And if you came to see a movie when it was raining, you just sat under the balcony so you wouldn't get wet. And it was like surround sound with the water trickling. It was very appropriate for jungle movies, but uh, not so appropriate for much else. But it was still functioning until the movie company pulled out and uh, left the city, uh, well, actually left the theater in, in pretty much in ruins and the family decided to give the theater to the city. A handful of us got together and organized an event called Night of Nostalgia. And we only had seats down here. The seats had been taken out of the balcony and were, it were, there were no seats up there for some 40 years. And those old decrepit seats in this old, musty, moldy place 
um, we had a big event, and there wasn't an empty seat in the house. We sat the city council down right smack in the middle. Some of my students, I was teaching theater at the high school at the time, some of my students performed some funny skits, and then we had people get up and tell their stories of their first date, their first kiss, their marriage proposal, and how important this theater was to this community, calling it really the heart and soul of our town. And they persuaded the city to accept it. But the city did a very smart thing. They couldn't afford to fix it, and they knew these dedicated people just might do it. So they formed a partnership. The agreement was that we would do all the restoration, we would raise all the money, but they own the utilities company, so they would furnish the utilities and give us some seed money each year, $50,000 each year, that would help a little bit with repairs and supplies. And we never closed, we kept doing tours, and we'd have a, a fishbowl out there that people could drop a dollar in, we'd get $30 and buy a can of paint, and scrape a little bit. That's how we started. We found our chandelier in shambles. We found the organ. We found everything and brought it back. Found the people that made the original marquees. They were still in business. Persuaded someone to replicate the original carpet. Found the company that made the original seats. They still had the design. There aren't quite as many. There are 1,100 today because they're like Americans. They're wider and softer. The Mighty World of Oregon is one of a handful in America that's back in the home it was built for. Whirlits of organs are the creme de la creme of the theater organ. And a theater organ is different than a church organ. It has real instruments, you know, drums and cymbals and all kinds of things that are real instruments in it, as well as the pipes, and it takes a lot of power for it. And it was found in Burleson, Texas. It had been sold to Billy James Hargis and then to an organ collector because the movie company couldn't keep it up. It was in terrible shape. The console was peeling. The pipes wouldn't play. So when we persuaded Jim Peterson of Burleson, Texas to sell it back to us, because it was ours, it still had our name on it, all the pipes were there, he said, you have to play it every day and you won't have anybody that knows how. So you must put in uh, a computer system that will replay concerts that have been played on that organ. You can't, it's not a recording, it's actually playing the pipes. So that's what we've done and uh, we've added some new instruments. It is now worth about a million dollars, the organ alone, and um, we play it constantly for visitors, and it's repeating um, what an organist has played on that organ here in our theater. We've done it all with grants, donations, and dedicated labor, mostly in-kind labor from everybody from electricians to plumbers and so on, who've given their heart and soul to this labor of love to preserve this historic treasure for generations to come. Our mission is to provide great entertainment for an underserved community. That was George Coleman's mission. 23 years later, here we are, and none of us thought it would ever be possible, but it's sort of our history of yesterday, our, our testimony to today, and then on into the future. Our motto is, and this is very important, that we don't own anything, we hold it in trust for the next generation. That's our mission. That's what we're all about. And that's what 